we are going to bring on board our top speaker, Mr. Daniel Okoroji. He's a serial entrepreneur. He produces amazing, amazing and quality paints. And he's also my husband, just so you know. I you know that. And so he's going to come on board and he's going to teach us how to deliver value without compromise. You know, this is we are talking about since we've been talking plenty, plenty since. Eh? See, there's a way to deliver your value so that you deliver top notch. There was something that Mr. Eben said about if you know you cannot do it well, don't take the job. So he's going to come on board and teach us how to deliver this value without compromise. So let's welcome on board Mr. Daniel Okoroji as he takes the floor. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, please, if you can hear me, I like to be interactive. I notice we've been serious. It's like we're attending a professional course and waiting to write exam. But it's all good. It's all good. Thank you, Valley Corp. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, this is a great meeting. I learned a lot. Thank you to all the speakers. Uh, Odogusa, it felt like we should give you the whole night. Eh? <laughs> Well, it was good. I really learned a lot. Thank you, Mrs. Joy. Uh, Ms. Joy, thank you, Mr. Eben. It was very enlightful. Okay, um, what I have to say today is like a charge. I'll be delivering a charge, or so to say, a pep talk. And thank you to the speakers who spoke. Uh, the things they shared were very important. So I'm here to talk about how to deliver value without compromise. Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to set up a background and try to touch the important areas before my time runs out. But nevertheless, I like to define value, first of all. Um, based on my write-up, value for me is providing solution for a problem. And that solution can be in form of a product or a service. Well, dictionary defined it as uh, the regard that something is held to deserve. That is the regard that something is believed to deserve. And also value. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Sure. Okay, okay. A value is the importance and the worth and the usefulness of something. Well, in this context, as a businessman or as an entrepreneur, the truth is the value you deliver is um your, your, your say about that value is important. But what is more important is your audience. The say, what your audience have to say about your product. And usually I would, I would advise entrepreneurs and business owners to, to uh, be flexible. Don't be rigid. Don't behave like market women. It's, it's market women that would want to sell to you. And if you don't want to buy, you can go. And they don't want to hear you complain. And, oh, no. Unless you want to keep playing local game. No. Let your plan be to extend even to the international world, okay? I feel like saying praise the Lord, but it's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, that is value. I've defined value. Value, uh, I can also say that value is the principle or standard of behavior. Uh, it's one's judgment of what is important in life. Well, all I want you to know based on this conference right now is that value is providing a solution to a specific problem. So until you have found a problem that you can solve, you're probably not delivering value. Okay, I don't want to sound like I'm lecturing us, but I want us to be interactive. Okay, uh, compromise. Uh, compromise is simply uh, giving out your value, in, giving out your value in a standard that is below uh, expectation that is below the desired expectation. So no matter how good your value is, uh, no matter how important your value is, sorry to say, if you give it out at a lower standard than expected, you will be, you will be giving out the wrong impression. Even if the person patronizes you at that time, he probably will not get back to you again, and he will probably talk bad about your product. So this is where I, I want us to not... Uh, have this mentality uh, of the, what I want to say is this, as a business person, every one customer, even if the person is a small child, is very important. Every one customer is very, very important. So have it as your standard 
to treat every customer special. Even if he's buying something of 10,000 or he's buying something of 5,000 and you have customers that are buying something of 200,000, 400,000, 1.4 million, treat customers as value, like treat them as though you value them a lot. Well, let me hurry up because of my time. Okay, now I have a question for everyone. I have a question for everyone. Now, my question is this. Are you creating value? And if you are creating value, how are you delivering that value? And um, this question is what I want you to just have in your mind while we talk through in this very section. Um, first of all, we have to know that when it comes to creating value, like I said, value is a product or a service that meets a specific need. So that is what value is. So everyone, we, we, we have experience, we have a knowledge, we have something we know how to do, we have a product we can create or manufacture. Uh, myself, I am into paint production. I run a paint producing company. We're into interior designs. We are into industrial chemical supply. We maintain your property. We fix all that you need us to fix. All you need to do is let us know what you want. We'll run it out for you. But that's notwithstanding. Uh, that notwithstanding, I, I want us to know this, that everybody can create value. Everybody has something he can do. Everybody has something he can offer, have a service he can present. He can uh, uh, offer to people to make... Uh, one thing about providing service is that service helps make people's life easy or people's um, desire, people's... Um, uh, what people are looking out to achieve. It makes it easy for them. And usually they will pay you for it because they cannot do it or they do not have the time to do it. Okay, so that is about value. Well, quickly, I want to say something before uh, we run, uh, go further. First of all, I want to, uh, like Mr. Eben said, a businessman or an entrepreneur has to have a certain mindset um, and he has to live a certain life. Whether or not you like it, um, when it comes to people who are making impact in this world they don't live a normal life and that's true they don't live a normal life their lives are uh, intentional we're going to talk about all of those but now i want to talk about how that you can position yourself to be able to uh, discover a value you can render to discover a service you can give to discover a product you can produce to discover a problem you can solve well first of all uh, i wrote down here I wrote legacy, and that's because everyone that is here, I understand that uh, you are here because of a purpose. You are either here to get better at what you do, or you are here to receive information that will encourage you, or to receive information that would um, uh, give you more knowledge or exposure about what you're doing or what you're not doing right thereabout. So, therefore, determine in your heart as a person or as an individual we're mostly young people here or as a young person to leave a legacy in this world don't just have a normal life i i usually say to people when things are normal around me i don't like it and that's true you, uh, what i mean is this desire to live an extraordinary life Desire to live an extraordinary life. Desire to make an impact. Desire to be a person of influence. And this will uh, guide you to actually delivering value. Because usually where problem is, is when people don't care about impact. I mean, good legacy, you know, not bad legacy. When people don't care about impact, when people don't care about influencing people rightly, they, they can do anything because they don't care. Okay? So, hope you can hear me. I've been talking for a while. Yeah, sure. If you can hear him, just drop a value, dot type value in the chat box so we can confirm that you all can hear him. All right, okay. Okay, okay. thank you very much. All right, so, like I said, desire to leave a legacy in this world. Desire to build a, a system that you can actually live for probably your, your offspring or something that can continue to run even while you are out of this world. 
you get, desire to be a person of impact. And this will really guide you to actually deliver value to people. And that's because usually when people make money priority, when it comes to business, frustration will finish you (laughs) because business or being an entrepreneur comes with a lot of experience, which if your desire was money in the first place, you will run out, you get tired, you get. But then if your desire is impact, if your desire is legacy, the, the passion is different. What is fueling your, your motivation is different, okay? It's not just money. So that being said, I'd like to just quickly talk about the next one. Number next is prayer. Yeah, prayer. Well, whether or not you like it or whether or not you know, this is a fact and it's true. Every wealthy man you know now has a spiritual backing. See, this life we're living in is more spiritual than it is physical. Honestly speaking, the life we live is influenced by the spiritual. All I'm trying to say is this. Be a man and a woman of the spirit. In the sense that you are not depending on your plan, on your head. You're not depending on your efforts. Trust God for your life. Pray about your plan. Well, Uh, I don't want to talk much about prayer because if I start, I won't stop anytime soon. But then prayer is much more than asking God for stuff. No. In prayer, you get clarity. In prayer, you get direction. In prayer, you get uh, words consigning a specific area as you want it. You get. So when it comes to being an entrepreneur, it's best you pray. And the other reason I would encourage you to pray as an entrepreneur is that we make plans and the truth is there are no guarantees that that plan will be successful 100 percent the only guarantee we have that our plan will be successful 100 percent is when we have prayed and handled other factors that are connected to that plan what i mean other factors is that when you make your plan there are the uh, uh, there are aspects of other people being involved in your plan You can't control the mind of people. Honestly, you need a divine force to be able to control the mind of people for your favor. Okay? That being said, prayers will help you gain clarity. Prayers will make things turn out for your good. It will place the hearts of men to be in your favor. Okay? That being said, number next would be learn... Relearn and unlearn. I I used this term because every man or every great man we know gave themselves to these three uh, three words. They learned, they relearned, and they unlearned. And I like to say this: eh? don't be don't be stereotyped when it comes to knowledge. Don't be uh, fixed. Don't be unchangeable. Open your heart and give yourself to knowledge. Give yourself to new knowledge and give yourself, uh, 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 make yourself forget or unlearn certain knowledge, certain things you've learned in the past. uh, uh, Decide to be flexible when it comes to knowledge. Get books, read books. See, as a business person, eh? see, there are things you should have started to do by now which one of it would be probably reading books on business management, reading books on uh, customer relationship, listening to sales uh, talks. I, I have a guy I listen to, Paul Fu, amazing man, talks about sales and all. These are the things you should give yourself to. Uh, don't, don't just fix yourself and hoping that things will work out because your idea or your value is dope. No. There are people who have better ideas than you do and they're not making money. Whereas there are people who have a, a fraction of your idea and they're making a lot of money. And that's because they are doing something different from your, uh, different from what you're doing. Now, nevertheless, how long do I have? Okay. I think I still have some time. Okay. Um, uh, usually in learning, in relearning and unlearning, like I wrote in my book here, 
that's this ex- uh, this exercise is what will expose you to the problem you can solve. And usually, this is what will expose you to the things you can do. The things you can you 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 be in a position to uh, in a position of discovering things that you can uh, get yourself involved in that will probably fetch you the uh, impact you want to give to the world, fetch you the the influence you want to become in this world. So you get these things by learning, you get these things by relearning, you get these things by unlearning. Okay, number next would be um, be intentional about your life, of course. Be intentional. Give yourself, uh, uh, I, I would call it a regimen. Don't leave your day to chance, no. Get yourself, uh, fix your, schedule your time in the day. Have a time where you study, have a time where you read, have a time where you listen to uh, YouTube uh, program conferences about businesses and all, especially in regards to your field of expertise. Okay, get better, expose yourself to updates, expose yourself to new inventions in regards to your um, your area of profession, your area of expertise. Now that is about being intentional. Number next would be to be disciplined. Uh, well, my discipline in this aspect is. Be, be disciplined enough to only deliver excellence when you are delivering your value, okay? Like, make it a, a standard that if it is not excellent, you will not give it out, no matter what it cost you. You get, I've done businesses for people where uh, there were errors, and the errors were not from me. A particular business I did early this year, I supplied the products, and it turned out that the person uh, didn't want that exact color. But of course, I'm talking of my paint product now, but of course, I he sent me a picture of what he wanted, and I produced that exact color for him. So what I noticed was wrong was that I made the mistake. I would have insisted, okay, someone said he can't hear anything. Uh, I think it's it's person's microphone. I'm okay, recording. okay. All right. So what happened was that I would have insisted on uh, sharing or showing the person a color chart. So the person chooses the exact colors he wanted. So when I noticed it, I'm talking of over a million naira worth of product was already experiencing this problem. So what I did was, of course, I pleaded. I pleaded and showed them how that we it was a misunderstanding of course i wasn't claiming i was right even if i was right never be on the defensive when it comes to your customers treat them as babies as children because they are the ones that would uh, get you new clients they are the ones that will talk about you and get to referrals okay so now what i did was that i i made up my mind to uh do a correction of course, I, I may look as if that he was going to pay for the correction. So when he paid for the correction, I did it. But of course, um, he hasn't sent the money to me. So after the job was done, I made a, a rough calculation of what it cost to do the correction. And when he had paid the, the part of the money he owed me to that extent, I told him to forget about the remaining. He was surprised. And of course, I could sense the joy in his heart. You get so. Uh, sometimes that's that's my own idea about excellence. Ensure that you are delivering excellence at all times. Because uh, Pastor Chris will say, he say, he say, make sure, uh, uh, he said, ensure to get it right the first time. And that's because of the impression it will leave in the heart of the person that you have delivered the value to. Okay. Um, uh, number next would be remove yourself from negative people. Uh, usually, what affects or what influences your action are probably the things you hear, probably the things you, you see, and the things you feel. And habitat is uh, a product, or your habit is a product of your habitat. And of course, your habitat is uh, comprised of the people around you. So as a man that wants to uh, live a unique life, live a legacy, you don't want to be uh, um, exposed to wrong ideas. Uh, exposed to bad influence, 
usually when I mean bad influence, uh, right now in Nigeria, it looks as if that money is one big deal. Uh, a pastor once said something. He says money uh, can never be everything. He said money is not everything. And ne- my money can never be everything. Uh, wait, let me even describe something for us. Prosperity. If you check the dictionary meaning of prosperity, money was not written there. Really, money was not written there. What was written there is increasing or growing at a certain thing. So getting better at what you do is prosperity for you. Everyone prospers at different level. So uh, learn to get out of the um, desire to be or to have what somebody else has. You don't know the process that person went through. You probably don't know what the person did to get those things. So focus on yourself. Focus on your self-growth. Usually, I would encourage that you should insist, you should desire to break your own records over and over again. How to do your past, get better every time. Do well to uh, learn something new every day. Forget about what people are doing. No matter the amount they are making, it's not your business. Your business is what you are doing. Your business is the, is the value you are providing. Your business is the, is the impact you are making, okay? Uh, uh, and finally, I will say don't quit. And in don't quit, I mean be patient. Sometimes things don't... Uh, business is not a rosy experience, okay? Of course, it's a good thing over time when your system, your good system have been set up and you can actually run without you fully getting involved in it. There's a, there's a time for that. But until that time, you are expected to go through the full process of setting up a business. And it's not, it's not funny. I'll tell you the truth. And the, one of the things about business or running a business is that you're going to make mistakes many times. But the important thing about uh, a, an entrepreneur is that no matter the mistakes you make, you leave that mistake behind you and you move on. You learn from the mistake, you apply your correction in, the, in your next move, and r- no matter what happens, you don't give up, you don't slow down, okay? That is uh, that about that. Now, I want to describe something to you, why you need to deliver true value. I want to describe something to you. Uh, first of all, I wrote down here that true value is attractive. See, you, uh, every one of us here, probably, we have a mentor. And I'll tell you one thing. You are attracted to your mentor because of what your mentor delivers to you, what uh, the value your mentors deliver to you. That is true value. Whether or not you are convenient. Sometimes when you know that he's speaking somewhere and it's probably something you can assess, you quickly log into it. No matter what you are doing, you want to be listening. And that's because you know that anytime you plug into uh, that mentor of yours, he's delivering value to you. That is a very attractive thing, okay? So value, true values are attractive, okay? True value are attractive. Now, number next would be that um, true values are genuine. Now, this is actually where everybody actually has the upper hand in their field of, uh, of expertise. Uh, that's because when it comes to genuine value, there are not many companies that offer genuine value. And I'm telling you this for, for real. And that's because as a person or as an entrepreneur, it's not easy to offer genuine value, but you must insist on it. And that's because once you are known for offering genuine value, you will have clients that you, you will not be able to manage because they will keep coming. I'll tell you this for, uh, for free. Take yourself, for instance. When you go to get a product from someone and the product you got well, it didn't satisfy you, the, the first thing you will do is, of course, manage what you have or probably if you can afford another one, you look for another place. But one thing is certain. You will probably not go back to that person you get. you probably not go back to that person. Or even if you think you can talk to the person, you can just talk or share your experience with the person. But in your heart, you're already looking for alternative. This is how the truth is genuine uh, values can be sensed. People can notice it. Even if it's expensive, if it is genuine, people will know. And they will always come back. See, when it comes to genuine uh, value, that is how you retain your customers. 
that's how you retain your customers. If there are values, if there are uh, probably a customer comes to you for something and you don't have it at that time, it is okay to say you don't have that particular one. You can suggest another option, but not in the sense that you are trying to deceive the, <laughs> the client getting the one you have. The person is going to sense it and it's, it, it sends out a very bad energy and that person is not going to come back to you. So if you want to retain your clients, ensure that your value is genuine. See, forget what people are doing online. Leave this social media you are considering every time. It's going to damage your, your notion or your, your, your mindset about value. Genuine value is what makes people rich. Whether you know it or not, genuine value is what uh, delivers wealth to people. So if you really want to be wealthy in this life, ensure that your value is genuine, okay? Now, number next would be value is uh, convenience. True value is convenience. Now, I'm saying this to everyone here, everyone entrepreneur here, ensure that your value is convenient. Ensure that it is accessible, it's easy to use. It is something that can, uh, can easily be uh, accessed, okay? Now, Usually, people return to values that they find easy to use. People return to values that are valuable, that you don't have to struggle to access it. So ensure that your value is accessible. Ensure that your value is convenient, okay? Now, number next would be, and this is a very important part of uh, this section. So value is predictable and consistent. True value is predictable and consistent. Um, take for instance, um, uh, what product do I use? Okay, let me say Apple products now. When you are getting an Apple product or an iPhone, for, for instance, one thing is sure. And that thing is that, first of all, the phone is fast. It's not going to be hanging. It's fast. It's, it has a way of attracting very good and strong network. And some of these values are very consistent with, that, uh, with Apple product. Now, that consistency is what it means that that uh, is what I mean by their value as the phone being predictable. So usually when I hear that an iPhone, especially their camera, doesn't have a good camera, I'm surprised because it's not consistent with their product. Okay? It's not consistent with the kind of value that they offer. So an Apple, okay, sorry, how long do I have? Uh, seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, shit. Sorry. All right. So let me just round it up. Lastly, uh, value is you or your, your value, your business. So what people buy from you, of course, what people buy from you beyond your product is your values. They buy you. Yeah. They buy your brand. They buy your business. So if you have built your business to deliver genuine value, to deliver true value, that is what people will keep buying. They probably may not want, or um, all I'm trying to say is this, your business is going to stand out if it is known for a certain value, okay? So I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It's like it's like you're describing value cup in everything you say so far. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've really learned a lot. I believe we've learned a lot. Delivering value without compromise. Packaging yourself to make sure that you retain your client base. You know, everything I thought today is um goes beyond the business owners, even if you have a job. I know some of you have job in different places. Even if you are doing a job, even if you are looking for a job, what makes people look for you is that when they trust that they can get value, like genuine value from you. So thank you so much, sir, for this session. It was super impactful for me. I really hope it was super impactful for you. If you have questions, if you have any question, you can ask now. You will use the preliminary minutes to answer those questions, you know, around how you can package what you already know, how you can do stuff, achieve results without compromising your, um, what's the word? Your value. Back to value again. Tell your question, let us drop your questions. Let's 
remember that tomorrow is going to be so value packed. Me and I'm anticipating. We have a lady, uh-huh. we have two ladies, one is for the ladies. So we have two ladies who are going to teach us affiliate marketing and tech, monetizing the tech industry. Those of us, do you know how much they pay print tech? As you're going back from this today's session, please go and Google how much they pay tech people. So you know how important tomorrow's classes, um, tomorrow's talk is going to be. They are highly paid. It's a highly paid job industry as a highly paid industry. So make sure you don't miss it. Any kind of tech. So she's coming to teach us uh-huh. how we can monetize tech. Tech. She's in tech and she's going to show us how she has been doing it. You know, hitting all the plenty, plenty, plenty figures. And also, thank you so much, sir. Um, before I deviate plenty, thank you for, so for your session. Thank you, and we really appreciate everything. And thank you, everyone, for being part of today's session. You know, I am really happy that we turned up. I'm really glad that we showed up. If you have any more questions, you can drop them in, in the group. I believe that uh, most of us came from the group. You can drop them in the group. If you're not in the group, you can indicate and you'll be added to the group. You know, let's just say this week is like free bonus for us. If I have questions, even me too, I can ask some of your questions. Maximize this opportunity because next time I was coming now, I will put price on it. You know, if you don't pay the money, I will not answer you. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we continue. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all our speakers. Miss George Choma, Mr. Iben Oishi, and Mr. Danny Rokoroji. Thank you so, 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 so much. Valley Cup is grateful. My team is grateful. And our community is grateful. So with this, we are saying good night. See you tomorrow.